What a monumental day. And I really want city staff that are down there to come up here. Because this day would not have happened but for these folks. And when I tell you in a day's time, two days time, like the passion, the mission that I have seen in the last few days, I cannot express how I get emotional. I'm so grateful, so extremely proud of this team. Some of them are have gone and come back and then we had Gray eyes, some of you know Mr. James Sanders in the Belvedere community out here doing hot dogs on the grill and chili today. I mean, it's just been the epitome of what Columbia is. Coming together, making something happen that was just an idea um, for our community. So I'm Teresa Wilson, city manager. I'm gonna hand off to our mayor, Daniel Rickman, and Councilwoman Oddity Bustles, who has chaired our a task force to prevent and end homelessness and let them talk about some of the strategies and what has brought us here today but I feel confident in saying from the city's perspective um, we're looking at a new era um, to help end homelessness in, in our community the chronically unsheltered having a new tool in the toolbox if they choose to use it and um, have an opportunity for a dignified option for transitional housing. It's not meant to be the end all solution, but it is another tool and the city can't do it by themselves, by ourselves. But we are clearly demonstrating through this council a true investment in human capital because we'll, we'll talk, let you talk to our new homeless services director and her team today. And we are, we have more than doubled the fiscal investment um, by the city in homeless services. And so with that, we want to show this approach to ask our partners to now step up with us and let's address this even further. So with that, I'll give it to Mayor Daniel Rickman. Thanks everybody for being here today. Thank all of council uh, that's here today. Um, Councilman McDowell, uh, Councilman DeWall, Councilwoman Herbert, Councilman uh, Brennan, Councilwoman Dr. Bustles, excuse me, um, to make sure that I get everybody correct. Um, but y'all, this, this is incredible. Think about this. This project in less than 70 days came from an email research to reality less than 70 days not only are we looking at providing opportunity for our unsheltered where we have our depot is that now i will be very clear this is temporary our long-term goal is to provide a permanent solution with the wraparound services that provide each and every individual who's suffering through homelessness, through whatever the circumstance is, an opportunity to have a successful life moving forward in, in a home, shelter, op uh, apartment, etc. We're going to continue to work together as a community, but these folks over here, if they're in their uniform or not in their uniform, sacrifice their extra time effort to make this happen it was a community build it was a city project from its inception to now as it's coming out of the ground and you know on behalf of a grateful city on behalf of this city council i want to give you all a hand and say thank you this is only the beginning and I want to thank all our partners, all the people who came and sat down. I know Ms. Wilson and her team had extensive meetings to put all the logistics together. But we're now taking a step forward. We're not going to solve it, but we're going to reduce it. And we're going to make sure that people have a dignified place to go and an opportunity to take advantage of all the services, all the compassion, and everything that this community has to offer if you're in that situation with that I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Russell. Thank you. 
Thank you everyone for being here today. As I reflect on February, which feels like a lifetime ago, but really wasn't that long ago, when the mayor Vaughn told me that I would be chairing the task force, I think one thing was very clear with my colleagues and I, Councilman Brennan and Councilman McDowell, that the way things are happening was not working. And that required us to have some hard conversations, uncomfortable conversations. We had to really look within our city, look at the way things are set up, the way we may have been avoiding solving the root causes of issues facing our city and kicking the can down the road for years, and really hold people accountable. And so today what you see is a combination or a perfect storm of so many wonderful things that the city has to offer. Our exceptional staff that put this together in 70 days, our partners that were willing to pivot and recognize that we have to try things a little bit differently, our city manager that was open to a new approach that the city council wanted to take in terms of streamlining and bringing services back into the city in terms of the coordination and understanding where there are gaps. And most importantly, a community that was very supportive, whether it was business owners, our state legislators, our uh, community partners that recognize that this is not just a that neighborhood or that corner of the city issue. This is something that affects everyone. No neighbor, no citizen should be forced to live on the street. And when we take care of our own, our city grows, it thrives, and there's so much potential that we can reach. And so this is just one step in our journey to ensuring that Columbia is an exceptional, compassionate place that takes care of our citizens. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about our short-term and our long-term solutions. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna pause. <laughs> Yeah, we're working on our quiet zones, actually. Thank you, Mayor. So hopefully that'll resolve some We always knew that the task force would immediately be focused on short-term solutions. That is, for the 250 people that we estimate are chronically unsheltered, we knew that by November 1st, when typically our temperatures drop, we had to do something about that, right? And in our research and in our conversations with providers and community members, we realized that no one was actually focused on this specific population. It can be very daunting to think about homelessness when you think about it as an entire issue, but when you start to narrow down what the city's lane is, what the city's, what the city's purview is, we began to realize there's really a path to make a difference. And so like city manager said, the city can't do it all, but we can certainly do our part. And so as we started to look at the chronically unsheltered, we realized that the number one thing we need is a place where people can have temporary housing that is single occupancy. So one of the things that you'll notice in the pallet shelters is that people can live alone and with dignity. And the second thing is, is we gotta have providers meet where, meet where people are. And when you look at the map of services all across the greater Richland area, even with a car, it's difficult to reach some of the services that are available for the homeless. And so we really hope that this is an opportunity to develop that hub, that triage point where providers can come and get folks into the services that they need and really make a more effective system that allows those wraparound services to occur. This is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. And there's much more work to be done that you will be hearing about over the next several months and years to help kind of put those puzzle pieces in place. I think I've shared with you all in the past that we've learned that Columbia actually is the only place that has a low barrier shelter like our partners at Transitions. In fact, we serve almost 19 counties just in Columbia. And so today I'm asking my regional and state partners to step up and help us because we can't take the social burden and cost of those experiencing homelessness alone for the entire state. And we're continuing to work for that regional cooperation, that state cooperation to ensure that we're providing services that are done well and are well supported by our, our partners. We've also learned that there continues to be a lack of services after 5 p.m., particularly around mental health. Yesterday at our legislative committee meeting, we worked with our lobbyists to start thinking about a strategy to work with the state to hopefully expand our crisis mobilization unit and other services available after five so that people don't have to go to jail when they have a mental health crisis. We've talked about ways in which we can continue to streamline the services that are available. We have over 100 programs available to address different facets of homelessness. And we recognize that sometimes people just don't talk to each other. And we hope that 
with the hiring of our amazing new director and our manager, and then of course any future staff to come, we can help start having some of those conversations to ensure that we are um, streamlining those services. And lastly, we know that this is just one piece of the pie, right? The Columbia can only do so much. And we hope that this inspires our, our, our partners in neighboring entities, counties, states, it, it, to really do their part and, and recognize that when we work together and when we recognize when things aren't working, anything is really possible. So I wanna thank the staff once again for all of their hard work. I wanna thank the task force for being okay with being uncomfortable, having conversations about what needs to happen. And I wanna thank my colleagues that have worked alongside me to make sure that we get to a place where we can treat our neighbors with dignity. So thank you. And I'll pass it over to our city manager. Thank you, thank you Dr. Bustle. So I would like for uh, Henry Simons, our assistant city manager over operations to come up and stand with me, as well as Kamisha Hepard, the new director of homeless services for the city of Columbia. Between the two of them, we can give you a few stats uh, kind of lay out the site for you from a logistical standpoint, the infrastructure you see will offer tours um, when we finish. Um, you might start hearing some noise behind me in a little bit because these folks are going to show you how these literally come together and have, have been um, constructed in such a short period of time. And Kamisha will talk about the programming of the site, the wraparound services Dr. Bustles mentioned, the trauma-informed care that we philosophically hope to um, ensure is happening here as well as case management. So Henry and then Kamisha will, will speak and I can help fill in any blanks you might have. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Hilary Simons and Mr. Wilson indicated I'm the assistant city manager of operations for the city of Columbia. I'd like to thank Mayor Rickerman, uh, our entire city council for their endorsement of the Rapid Shelter Columbia. Of course, especially our city manager, Teresa Wilson, for leading this project, which we envision uh, will transform lives. Uh, it is my pleasure this afternoon to provide a brief update on the Rapid Shelter Columbia construction currently going on all around you. Um, we are finalizing construction of 54 pallet shelters uh, for our chronically unsheltered homeless population, as has been indicated earlier. Uh, 50 of these shelters are 64 square foot units that will house one person each. Each unit is equipped with an air conditioning unit, heat, a fire extinguisher, convenience outlets with two USB ports, an emergency exit door, and one bed. The four remaining units are 100 square feet units, and we will utilize them for security, city staff, and provider operations. With unanimous approval by our mayor, as well as our, our entire council, we launched this project in early September. As you can see, in a very, in a very short time frame, we made significant progress uh, with this work. A tremendous amount has been done to keep this project uh, on track. Uh, from our engineering drawings, which includes grading and our drainage plan, to Dominion Energy Partners, who completed the installation of our new service and transformer and are also energized the electrical meters for the pallet shelter themselves. Uh, there is also installation of sidewalks that have taken place, uh, artificial turf, fencing, as well as fiber installations uh, completed in our overflow buildings, which you see to the right of me, your left, to include communication and camera wiring as well. Uh, there will be uh, installation of 29 cameras uh, within and around the shelter to ensure that the campus is secure uh, and safe. And we've also incorporated uh, LED lighting uh, as well. Um, everyone involved is extremely proud of this effort, um, including our internal uh, departments, as Ms. Wilson has discussed earlier, uh, who formulated teams to complete this project. Just an incredible amount of teamwork that has been exhibited and on display even, even as of today. So I would like to recognize the following departments for their commitment. Public Works, our Police Department, Engineering, our Fire Department, Parks and Recreation, our Utilities Department, all of these departments came together. Absolutely. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Came together, formulated their teams, and it was just amazing how quickly they worked. So we're grateful uh, for their participation. So we're working towards a tentative completion date of November 1st. Uh, we would like to be ready to receive our first client uh, in and around that time. And this pretty much concludes my, my update. Again, we are sincerely thankful for the commitment of our external partners as well as our internal partners, our city staff, for the work that's been done. Now at this time, I would like to introduce Kamisha Heppard, the Director of Homeless Services for the City of Columbia. Kamisha. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for saying that part, my name correctly. <laughs> I'm, I'm privileged to be here today. I want to thank um, the City Council, Ms. Wilson, um, the Council. I want to thank um, Mr. Craig Curry from Transitions, allowing my transition into this position to be easy and smooth. Um, I'm excited about doing something that has never been done before. Um, I'm encouraged because I'm a part of a great community where the resources already exist. So it will not be a hard thing in bringing individuals experiencing homelessness into these single occupancy pallets. Um, we have hired a great team of individuals that's going to be able to assist me with making appropriate assessments with clients bringing them in, providing the resources that they need. Um, the goal would be to bring them to a point of stabilization, whether it's with their mental health or substance use or whatever reason, whatever brought them to homelessness, bringing them to stabilization and then identifying the appropriate transitional housing for them. So housing may look different for each individual um, some may need to be in supportive housing where the wraparound services are there and they have a meeting each week and following up with what is necessary. Um, some may be able to use rapid rehousing if you guys are familiar with that where they just need a little bit of help to transition over into housing um, and work on their needs in their home. I'm just excited for the opportunity. I, I, I came up just open to answer any questions anybody had. I apologize. A little nervous, excuse me. <laughs> Great. Amazing. So I did invite some of our partners and I thank um, Melanie from Salvation Army, Comet, and um, I already recognized Mr. Curry from Transitions just excited to be able to partner with them and I know that we're gonna do great things because we have done great things. Great. That's great. That's great. So any questions? We're we're open to questions. We know you all wanna get some yeah. B roll shots of the pallets. I think the air conditioning is on in some of them, so that's pretty neat. Um any questions? I apologize, I should have covered that. So this is gonna be a referral process only. I'm working with outreach um, individuals from different agencies. Um, there is an ongoing outreach meeting each week and um, I met with them last week and we talked about um, targeting those individuals experiencing homelessness in the city um, location and um, they'll complete a referral form, send it over to me and my team and we'll make an um, a call of where they will be placed at. Okay, thank you. So is it possible that someone staying at transition be stay here? It's possible. Okay. Not how many people have uh, you have uh, referred to? We, we don't have any referrals at this point, but I believe that by November 1, we'll have about 10 individuals ready to be placed. Right. That will be um, decided on an individual basis. 
So if we get someone that's really struggling with their mental health or substance use, employment at that time is not a priority. The priority would be stable. Sir? No, bro. I'm just oh. agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> Reverend McDowell kind of chimes in. Yeah. 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 Just saying. Just agreeing. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Kamisha. So the the priority be the priority would be the imminent need for the client, and so what's going on with them, and if it's the mental health, then we'll be reaching out to our um, partners, and I plan to have partners on site. So partners will be here on a site, on a schedule. And so if, um, what, the, what the client needs will be here. And if y'all have an individual who is eligible to stay here, but they have a child, is there anything in place? Is, are children able to stay here with their parents as well? No, ma'am. This is going to be an adult facility only. It'll be 18 and older. But what we would do is look at our community resources and make appropriate referrals. What's the term on how long someone can stay? Right now, we, we are looking at up to 90 days. Um, but because this is something that has never been done before, we're not, that's not written in, in stone. And what is your plan to ensure safety? I know there's going to be a security officer on duty. Is there anything that you guys can do to make sure <laughs> um, thank you, uh, first of all. Um, unbelievable job, Ms. Wilson. Thanks for your leadership. Um, staff has been incredible. Um, safety obviously has been um, an important part of the discussion as, as this has been imagined and, and planned. Um, we're working with um, a private security firm that will have a 24-7 presence here. And um, that is a um, that's a presence that'll that can escalate in numbers based on the, the population that we're serving here. Um, the number one priority is um, safety of the clients being served and safety of our staff. Um, we've um, had lengthy discussions about um, the quality of, um, um, of security personnel with an emphasis on de-escalation, conflict resolution. Um, but again, number one priority is to keep everybody safe. Um, Communication is important with, uh, internally with staff, and, and, um, and, I, and I say internally including the police department. Um, although we are not providing the security here, um, we are the first line of defense and will be in constant communication. We are a very big part of the referral process and delivering potential clients here. Um, and of course, we work uh, closely with all of our city team um, on any kind of security or safety measures and, and um, that relationship will, will be strong here as well. Will the Inclement Weather Center still be available and will it still be the same amount of things? Yes, ma'am. It will still be available. The only thing that changed about that service is the name and going forward, forward is called Rapid Shelter Columbia Overflow. They're both open. Yes. They're both open not just one or the other. Mm -hmm. Will there also be staff members here 24-7? Will there be a staff member present always? Yes, ma'am. Can you talk a little bit more about the transportation? So for Rapid Shelter Columbia, we will provide our own transportation. And I don't want to get that mixed up with the overflow. Overflow transportation is provided by Common. Um, Rapid Shelter Columbia, we will have our own transportation, um, providing transportation for clients um, to appointments and different things they need to attend to. You said it's you said it's never been home before. What makes it the uh, first facility of its kind in the southeast? Does that come to this? I think this has never been done before with the overflow and the rapid shelter together. Um, and in addition, these services are for the city of Columbia. Well, would only be available to people that were located, you know, almost within the city limits or also some from the town? From the city of Columbia. The city it's the limits? individuals um, experiencing homelessness that we outreach within the city. Within the city Yes, ma'am. And, um, you know, we have estimated that's about 250 people. Now, they may have come from all over, but they primarily reside in the city of Columbia. 
As I've been looking for individuals to hire, that has been an option. I have not had a candidate yet. But if you have a candidate that you feel is, um, come, come see me. <laughs> that was a loaded answer. <laughs> turned into survivalists. So, so, I mean, do you have a strategy to be able to, to, be able to, be able to, to, you know, to reach these people? Because, as I say, you know, as I say well, I'm working with this family with a wife, now we transition, and the husband is just, uh, he, he, he just decided, you know, made this decision to be David, there's a gap. This place is to fill the gap. This is the purpose of reading that, is we're the center of trauma. For 17 counties, we understand that's part of the gap. That's why we're here today. And we'll be employing trauma-informed tactics, in, especially in terms of intake and some of the work that Kamisha and her team will be doing. But there are trauma experts out there that also need to come to the table and help provide those intensive services that some of these folks will need, um, but was very excited as someone who um, has done the work in trauma to have somebody who is trained in that to be leading our work from the city's perspective. Are there going to be any additional programs to target and help those folks that are on the street, like what you described, but do not want this type of structure? Is your question, are there going to be additional programs for clients who are resistant and coming into yes. So when we outreach individuals and they are resistant, we'll make the appropriate referrals according to what that person needs. There has to be structure, though. We can't continue to allow folks to endanger themselves wandering around the streets. So every program has a set of rules and responsibilities that you've got to commit to. So, I mean, this is a little bit of tough love, but that's going to be part of the program moving forward. And that's why the single occupancy component is such a big deal, because for many people, the traditional shelter model isn't working, going back to your question about trauma. And so we hope that that helps really um, engage some of our hard to reach or resistant uh, chronically unsheltered population. All right, go take a tour. <laughs> Good job. Bye.